Okay, Mitch, this conference is so amazing. I mean, it's the first day, just the first couple of hours, and already I feel like I've heard enough to go home and feel really satisfied. How did you guys pull all this off in such a short amount of time? And working with the federal government on, on the local level, I mean, it's what it's all about. Uh, we went to D.C. a year ago. So a year ago this time, we went and participated in the Global City Team Challenge, which is put on by NIST, which is part of the Department of Commerce. And I had the opportunity to ask, and they said yes uh, to coming with me, which was uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Adler, who was fairly new at the time, uh, our city manager, Mark Ott, and our then general manager for Austin Energy, uh, Larry Weiss. We had a delegation of about 12 people, including those three gentlemen, who decided to go to D.C. to look at this Smart Cities Conference to understand what that meant. We're Austin. We think we're progressive. We think we're smart. But are we really? And what is that? And how, how do you share and learn from other cities? That was the big thing. And, and all three gentlemen and our, and our entire cast was just blown away in terms of not the conference itself, but just by the collaboration between cities, the sharing of information between cities. What was going on in Portland, could we use it in Austin? What was going on in Austin, could they use it in, in Schenectady, New York? And last year there was 80 cities there. Uh, this year there's 150 cities here from around the world, 14 nice. different countries. Uh, so it's grown. So not, it has, not only has it grown in terms of people, but in terms of length. So what we decided to do, we raised our hand and said we would like to pull this into Austin because we think we can do this. We, you know, we've got lots of conferences and festivals and things here. We do it pretty well. Um, but nothing around the smart city Internet of Things uh, per se. Uh, part of South by Interactive hits on those kind of things, but not as a, as a, as, as a real focus. So we decided to add on two more days uh, uh, with this Global Cities Team Challenge called the Smart Cities Innovation Summit. And it's really the first time where cities, over 150 cities from around the world, not just the U.S., are coming together with the corporates to understand, okay, the corporates meaning IBM, Cisco, Intel, AT&T, uh, NXP, et cetera, and what they have as a platform and what these cities can potentially use in terms of uh, data and other types of uh, technology innovation that they can potentially use in their cities to, to solve some of these big problems that they have. I'm so happy to see it happening. I mean, just someone who's been in tech and policy and is a concerned citizen, it makes all the sense in the world, but the reality of all those things happening sometimes gets a little fuzzy. So I'm really encouraged by the words that I'm hearing, which are collaboration and taking risk and trying small, lean startup, and then it really inviting the public sector. I've heard a lot about universities today um, and local government, federal government, hopefully state government too, really inviting this conversation. So. Thanks for having the courage to try it. Well, really you're, appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank you. Thank you for uh, doing this. You know, I think people are really getting the message that it can't just be top down, which yeah. a lot of our government has always been. Right. Um, it needs to be bottom up as well. I think the panels today, the mayoral panel especially, or the federal panel, you know, the mayoral panel, they talked about how, you know, does it really matter who's in the state capitol? Does it really matter who's in the White House? It does to a certain extent, yeah. mainly from funding a funding perspective. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what can be done on a city level in terms of infrastructure, energy, water, bridges, uh, traffic, uh, et cetera, all these issues that we are contending with for sure here in Austin and most and around, the, uh, around the country, it's not all going to be solved by innovation and technology. That's the part that we're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a lot of what this is. There's regulation, there's policy, et cetera, et cetera. This is a technology perspective, and that needs to combine with the, the regulation, the policy as well. Yeah, and I hope everyone gets the message that it's a shared responsibility, private sector, public sector, citizens, everyone being engaged in that we're all in it together. It's the only way we're going to figure it out. It is, out. and you know, we, <laughs> we hear this PPP uh, partnerships, you know, public-private partnerships, which are more and more, uh, we've had three here in Austin, mm -hmm. uh, which have uh, MCC, Semitech and Pecan Street, which all have all been very successful in terms of engaging academia, government, uh, citizens, uh, all, uh, and corporates all at one time, and they've been very successful. So the fact that you've had successful PPPs in Austin and elsewhere just says, okay, success follows success. That seems to work. Let's do it again. So it I'm not sure again. exactly what's going to come out of this other than discussion and collaboration and hopefully, you know, us talking to other cities, whether it be Portland or whether it be Amsterdam, uh, we do intend to have this, uh, this conference annually. 
Uh, it may go from city to city and come back to Austin. We'll see. We're still in the planning stages of that. Nice. But stay tuned.